Hello. Hello. Thank you. Um, I have had two points, but I've been like consistently drunk this whole week, I think, so I've just topped up. <laughs> No. Um, so you have to bear with me if I can't read very well. Um, that isn't anything to do with a drink. <laughs> uh, I am going to, because my book, which you can buy for nine ninety nine, <laughs> um, is is out, and I'm celebrating being a dork. <laughs> um, and you know, having interactions that are less than grown up. I'm going to pepper this set with strange messages I've had on online dating. Woo! Nice. Um, which you know, you know they're going to be good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So here's the first one for you. You are like marshmallows on top of a hot chocolate, as you are what I call the finishing touches to beauty, and not just that, but perfection in my eyes too. Oh. Oh. No punctuation, <laughs> obviously, because no one uses punctuation on dating sites. Um, and that will lead nicely, not really, <laughs> nothing to do with the next poem, um, into a poem I like to call Tom Cruise's Front Right Teeth. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes I find the world all a bit too much. Adulting is hard when being a cliche millennial is oh so easy. But at times like this, I just like to repeat my mantra. Something that always puts things into perspective for me. Tom Cruise's front right tooth <laughs> is in the middle of his face. As in, it is smack bang in the center. And if his front tooth can be so unapologetically central, well then I can get through anything. If my rent is due, but I'm a little short. If I have a deadline at work that I know I won't make. If that guy won't text back, it's all okay. Because Tom Cruise's front right tooth is in the middle of his face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why Tom Cruise's Dental facts put me at ease with the world. Or why I feel so insatiable for his right insider. But when I feel pressure from the world to get on with my life, find a partner, buy a house, I find immense comfort in Tom's unusual ivories. I can see someone's looking it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his canines. Wisdom, or molars, or even that front left incisor that bring me back down to earth. But that central one, so bright, so pearly and white, that makes life in general just seem so absurd. But should Tom ever feel the need to correct this endearing trait, I'm not really sure what I'd do. I'd have to find someone with something just as farcical, and pray that Will Smith has toes as long as his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for the next message? Always. Woo. Are you my appendix? Because I don't understand how you work, but this feeling makes me want to take you out. <laughs> I've actually reused that one. <laughs> um, so I have been, for the last year, uh, I've, I've been at college studying beauty therapy and I have had to do a lot of pedicures and before I started there I was very scared of feet. <laughs> um, and it wasn't just like I didn't like feet, I was actually scared of them. Um, and so someone suggested that I write an erotic foot poem. Oh, no, please don't. Oh. So <laughs> foot fetish. Foot fetish. That is exactly the reaction I want. Feet, feet, feet. I love feet. Feet make me complete. <laughs> Your feet. <laughs> and yours. 
and yours. I'd get on all fours for yours. <laughs> <laughs> you might frown upon my need for feet, but fingers are too long, but feet are just so right. So give me your toes, your fantastic little toes. Doesn't matter if they're fetid or gross, it's a fetish, I know. But hear me out. I don't care about faces. Feet are more familiar. I'm a fanatic, you could say, of miniature phalanges. Of feet and their delicious flavour. <laughs> if you don't like that line, you're not going to like the next one. <laughs> Sucking on a flock of toes is just my absolute favourite. I especially like nails that are long. Painted or naked, I don't mind. Free and frequent is how I like feet. No need for shoes, apart from flip-flops. <laughs> I wish I could be the thong between your toes. Floss my teeth with the hair upon your twinkle toes. <laughs> it's hurting me as well. Put your soul into my heart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> where I can think of you tickling me with your dreamy little digits. You say it's disgusting. Just think where they've been. Bare feet on bathroom floors, crumbs caught up in between, and sweating skin in closed toe shoes. Oh baby, I know it's obscene, but I love it. So show me your feet, those fabulous feet. And to those who say I'm gross, to you I say, suck my toe. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of you that were squirming then. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have done a trigger warning. <laughs> if you had, I would have left. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, does any of your comedy come from internet dating? <laughs> yes, yes, it does. <laughs> um, my next poem is, I'll preface it by saying that in one of my other poems, I have a line that was, um, I think about you like Shaggy thinks about Scooby. And my, my tutor at uni, when I was doing creative writing here at Bath Spa, um, said that I probably shouldn't put that in because it sounds like I want to fuck a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, she definitely would not like this poem. <laughs> <laughs> You already know what it is. <laughs> um, and I did not write the page number down for it was being so organised. But I found it now. Brand new sound. <laughs> I used to be a teacher as well. <laughs> now a lot of girls have issues with the kind of men they date. With certain figures in our lives being varying degrees of present. I don't want to get all Freudian about it, but I've got issues. Horse issues. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I date men who remind me of the horse I never had. The horse I fell off of when I was five and didn't get back on. Well, I've been on a few things since. <laughs> and I've not met my Stalin. See, because I never had a horse, it's given me issues Freud would have a field day on. Give me two men in a horse suit and I'll have a good time. It's just, I love men who can feed off the palm of my flat hand. <laughs> men who can fit a whole carrot in their mouths. <laughs> I've got reins and a harness with me if anyone thinks they could be my equine prince. <laughs> don't need a thoroughbred. But bring me a shire and I'll grab him by his mane. I'll call you whatever turns you on. Oh yeah, horsey. Yeah. Don't trotting stop, horsey. <laughs> Give it to me, horsey. 
Be the horse I never had, the pony I pine for, the Mustang I must have. <laughs> I love a man with a ponytail. And obviously he has to be hung like a horsey man of just my thing. <laughs> And all I want is a man who can jump over a seven foot fence with me on his back. <laughs> <laughs> is that too much to ask? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> She's never actually heard that poem. Um, she might leave halfway through. <laughs> or at the start. Um, okay. Here's another one. Sound of punctuation. You are like a bunch of red roses that blooms bigger than any other bunch of flowers as my red heart smiles inside full of clear, your ever beauty that's absolutely stunning. <laughs> okay, and from there we go to um, the title poem from my book, which is called Real Grown Up Women, and if, if anyone wants to buy it, I'm very heavy in my bag, so I'd like to get rid of weight, if that's too possible. Um, and also, there's, I've heard people laughing out loud when they've been reading it, so I'm assuming it's alright. Um, could be pity. Okay, real grown up women. Real grown up women buy their makeup from makeup counters. They don't rifle through the bargain bin at Superdrug looking for the least used text lipstick. Grown-up women don't accidentally grow penicillin in their used coffee cups. And they definitely don't tell a man who is flirting with them that they have dandruff on the face. <laughs> These are all true stories, by the way. <laughs> Grown-up women do not attempt to cut and dye their own hair and end up looking like a cross between Boris Johnson 